staff reading, and this is exactly what we teach our students, so of course their out-of-class papers are going to be different. That said, I think there are plenty of students who get help from their brother or their mother or whoever, and that's really hard to um, to do anything about. And the most we can do is try to impress on the student how important it is to do your own work, because otherwise, what are you learning? Um, and sometimes they hear that message, but sometimes they don't. Sabrina, you're our next caller. Welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I was a student. I just graduated from university. Congratulations. Just, thank you. And I just wanted to comment that I think the thing that needs to change is the student's mentality about plagiarism. Because when I was a student, I don't think it was, it was expressed enough that plagiarism was such a big deal. And I know a lot of students that were actually caught, actually caught cheating or plagiarizing papers. And there wasn't a very big punishment. It was like you got caught, you got slapped on the wrist, and that was it. And I think I think the thing that needs to change other than the websites and other than the assignments is making students realize that plagiarism is something that shouldn't be done. And I think maybe if the punishment was worse, then students would reconsider before they plagiarize. Well, what about that notion of punishment? Uh, I mean, if punishment is indeed preventive here and is used uh, in a preventive way, uh, and it's and it's really punitive, I'm wondering, Tim Dodd, uh, would we have perhaps less plagiarism? Well, if, if punishment uh, and the most extreme forms of punishment were effective, we would see no plagiarism at single sanction schools where the punishment is always expulsion. Um, somebody used the word desperation uh, in the conversation. And so much of, and I mean, I've been a dean at a number of institutions and dealt with these sorts of cases. Um, often um, the motive, if you will, for handing in uh, fraudulent work is, is time pressure, is an inability to manage assignments. Um, even in an environment where the punishment is going to be swift and consistent and strong. Um, yes, I think we have to be quite um, um, adamant about our intolerance of this sort of behavior, but we also have to recognize the complexity of, you know, as I've said before, the messages, the environment, the way students handle work, and I think our response to misconduct has to reflect an understanding of those and address those in both a remedial and punitive way. What do you think, Sabrina, if I may ask you, should be done? I think the thing that needs to be changed is the mentality. I'm not sure how we can go about changing that. Well, so what would the punishment be, though? I mean, you, you emphasized that in your comments initially. I think, because I know a lot of students that when they did get punished, all it was was, you know, you get punished once and you get sent to do the judicial affairs and they just talk to you about it and that's it. And you say, oh, I, I cheated. And if you admit it, then you're fine. I think maybe if um, you got an F in the class or or were unable to attend school for a, a quarter or something something along the lines of that. I'm not sure exactly. Well, you know, Yasha Harari, what do you think ought to be the punishment for plagiarism? First of all, I think it's uh, quite notable that the student and the previous callers have all said something similar, which is the values have to be improved. <coughs> and I think it's... You know, that, that goes back to what I said earlier, which is, uh, you know, first of all, as long as there's an incentive for staff members and faculty members to be writing papers and making a heck of a lot of money on the side, and that's, you know, that's probably a good reason that they do that, uh, as long as that's happening, well, how are we exactly going to be able to teach the kids the better values? Um, this isn't a brief for raising faculty salaries, is it? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I said this may be a brief for raising sa right. faculty right. salaries. It may be an argument to raise faculty salaries. That's a good point. But uh, in the meantime, you know, since it isn't obviously the, you know, the best and brightest, unfortunately, in America that are aspiring to be, you know, high school or college teachers, unfortunately, uh, you know, you get very often people who are either unqualified or, 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 or you get the overqualified ones who know full well how to write a great paper, and many of them go home in moonlight and, and make that extra cash. So what we need to do is if we're going to start to, you know, want children to be uh, more, aware of the of the values of higher education uh, and and like the caller from India said uh, you know they pride their, themselves on their education in India therefore there's probably a lower cheating rate in the culture as a whole uh, we need to we need to work here on not just you know, the, blaming the kids. I mean, we just heard from the caller, Sabrina. The kids are all right. They, you know, they want to, they want to uh, have a higher set of values, but look at the examples they're learning from. They're learning from teachers who are going home and making a, a tidy profit, you know, moonlighting and writing papers. Now, we ought to add uh, that, that, that there are not that many of those teachers doing that. But, uh, it's, but it's significant enough that, you know, there definitely are 
I mean, I can tell you I get a, a, a hefty number of emails every month asking us if we want to hire a teacher, you know, this teacher or that teacher to write papers. And the answer is we don't pay people to write papers, but we know that a lot of companies do. And, you know, obviously that's, that's what a lot of people are doing. So, you know, it doesn't take that many teachers to write a whole bunch of papers. And, and obviously that's, you know, the, the case is you've got wonderful people like John Barry and you've got all these uh, people out there, you know, doing all this kind of academic ethics work. And they're doing it to improve the system. But what we're saying is, you know, don't just blame the kids. Um, you're saying the system sucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yasha Harari, again, is a partner of SchoolSucks.com. He's in Eyelot, Israel. And uh, Brandon is in San Francisco. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I think that a good portion of this is just that America as a nation has become very apathetic about work ethics. Um, it is partly that the teachers don't put the effort into the classes that they should. I taught at a community college briefly, and the student handbook said that the teachers were supposed to teach in class for an hour and then have four hours afterwards that they put into that class. And I was teaching 30 hours a week, so there's no way I was going to put 120 hours in afterwards. But I also would get reprimanded if I didn't give enough portion of my class a C or better. There was no bell curve anymore. So if I'm going to give A's to everybody, why bother to check the papers? You know, that's an important point. It is an inflated grading world out there, and it makes it all the more competitive. And I think uh, that has to be factored into the whole uh, calculus of what we're talking about here. Uh, some thoughts uh, from you on that, Tim Dodd? Um, again, I think the fact that we're having these conversations are alerting people, and we do know schools that are addressing the issue of grade inflation. We know that there are schools that are really rethinking the notion of what's rewarded in faculty work. You know, I don't think we are ossified at this point and, and stymied by this, uh, you know, kind of scourge of plagiarism and cheating. I think a lot of schools are doing much better. I mean, certainly, you know, we, we have schools do assessments, and we see schools clearly improving. Um, in terms of their rates of cheating, and we know that they are improving because faculty are working differently with students, because there is greater emphasis on values, because students um, are really challenging other students to, to do honest work. I, I think we're pushing back on the tide uh, in, a, in a pretty good way. Well, I like your optimism. I hope you're right. Let me go to some of the emails here. This is from David in Berkeley. It says, we miss a huge opportunity when we teach merely that plagiarism is wrong because it's unoriginal and copying. In a world where we feel we have little voice and influence, parroting the words of others, words of others is another way we see our own power. Young students need to learn this. First year students are still fresh on the idea that education is largely about building the skills to form and communicate a well supported opinion. Let them know that their voice is power. That comes from Berkeley, of course. Uh, here's Phil who says, I hope you'll discuss uh, how plagiarism simply signals weakness in acknowledging others and that we all get this weakness by academe's universal voice of neutered impersonality. Students in any department typically see instructors never connecting to any voices outside their specialization. To quote more widely, requires skills, especially for transitions from one's own voice to another's. But better reference to others also requires fewer of us in specialized turfs and impersonality conceits. And Robert asks, is, is it plagiarism used material from a paper you wrote for one class and used in fuller part for another class? <laughs> Former grad student pointed us out as a problem, but can you steal from yourself? You own the copyright. I don't find any objection to that. Do you, uh, Elise? I don't, but I know that some faculty do, and they put that in their syllabus that they don't want any work that's been submitted to another class. Well, I'd like the students to ask, actually. <laughs> uh, seems the proper protocol. Peter, you're on with us. Hi. Peter Warfield in San Francisco. Hi, Peter. Uh, the, one of the uh, problems that I would uh, wonder about uh, if how widespread it is is the question of faculty themselves doing this. The Saturday, last Saturday's San Jose Mercury News had a story on the front page about the uh, George Shultz giving the Henry Kissinger speech at the Library of Congress and some Stanford students finding out that this had been, um, that large parts of it were taken from a published work that uh, Shultz's speechwriter or assistant over the years had published previously. So uh, he's connected with Stanford, I believe, as, uh, through the Hoover Institution. And so there's an example of a uh, professor or uh, an academic who's uh, working in that kind of capacity, doing the very thing that uh, you're, you know, that people are concerned about students doing. 